Thank you, Jesus. Yes, yes. yes. You know what the Lord keeps on impressing upon me over and over and over again. How Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. And that he never changes. Even though his ways are above our ways, his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. Yes. Yet Jesus Christ of Nazareth remains constant. He's a constant force in our life according to the faith of Jesus Christ that we need to be rooted and grounded and placed upon the solid rock. Oh, yes, sir. Hallelujah. And you know, in this day and age, Jesus wants us to return back unto the old landmarks. Amen. The old landmarks of the Bible. You know, I see it move, like Brother Ron was saying, within the Cherokee people, and I know it's here also. There's a move to go back and to the old ways among the, the Native Americans, and I'm sure also among the First Nations, they're going back to spiritualism. <laughs> they're going back to a root and, and becoming confused because it's a history. You know, we can love our history and we can look back, but we have to put everything in, in moderation and in temperance and in the mind of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Let this uh, same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. He said to gird up the loins of our mind and to try everything according to his word. And that's why that word has to be so strong and steadfast in us. That we can be like a house that the wind cannot Knock it down. When the winds blow upon that house, we can stand strong like that big oak tree with the big strong roots that go down into the river, the underground river. Yeah. Jesus wants us to go down into the river. He wants our roots to be strong so that when the winds and the waves come against us, we can stand and when we've done all, we can stand. And we can stand, therefore, Amen. being likened unto our Lord Amen. and putting faith and confidence in Jesus Christ. And the Lord, just recently I was seeking the Lord. The Lord began to encourage me about the First Nation people and how God wanted one more time to visit them, that God had sent many godly people to you in the past. But one more time, God wants to stir and bring revival. And as I was seeking the Lord and just reaching the Lord out to the Lord in tongues, just a beautiful tongue came over me. And as I began to sing, the Lord spoke to me, and I knew it was a, it was a, it was a First Nation. It was some type of language. And the Lord just began to speak to me about revival among the First Nations. And I was very encouraged. And then as I, I, we went through, I went through a period of seeking the Lord just some time that I was uh, just trying to get away and give my body to the Lord, buffet my body, keep it under subjection, and yield my members to Jesus. And one night I was laying down upon my bed, getting ready to go to sleep. And as I go to sleep at night, I always think about Jesus. And my husband wasn't there because he was off somewhere seeking the Lord too. So I was there by myself. And I began to reach out to Jesus. And, and lots of times he'll, he'll read to me as I'm going to sleep at night. And I love it because I can just focus in on the Word of God. It's such a blessing when God puts two people together. And, and the word of God is their union. Yes, Thank you, Jesus. It's what holds them together and helps them to walk in the way. And when one falls, the other one's there to help pick them up. Hallelujah. And we have an advocate with Jesus Christ, the righteous. He is the propitiation of our faith. He is God incarnated. The only way we'll ever see God is through the face of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. He is the word of God made flesh. Hallelujah. The same word that 
was that created the heaven and the earth. Hallelujah, the same voice that spoke to Moses out of the burning bush when he had to cover his face because the holiness was so great. He felt like he could not look upon the burning bush. This is the voice of the Lord Jesus where we exceedingly fear and quake at the mighty power of our God. Our God is so much greater than anything that Satan can put upon us. Hallelujah. He has given unto us power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt us as we have to stand clothed in the blood of Jesus. It's only that blood of Jesus. And it's only by drinking of his blood and eating of his flesh that we can, as we are partakers of his life, that we too can be partakers of his fullness. Hallelujah. But as I was laying upon my bed, reaching out to Jesus and just thinking about how you can praise him upon the bed and how you can reach out to Jesus and I want to go to bed with Jesus on my mind. All of a sudden, I saw a face and this man was kind of turned on a diagonal like this and I didn't feel good about this person. And, and as, I, as he began to come clearer to me, I could tell he was either a Native American or a First Nation and he had his hair pulled up kind of on the top of his head. He was definitely a man. Had like, you know, his hair pulled up in like a man bun, I call it. And though, but he was looking straight like this. And I saw war paint on his face going up like this. Going up like this. And I felt like the devil was mad. The devil was mad because of the Lord had been showing me and I've been praying and standing in the gap, especially for the First Nations, especially when I go into Canada. This is what I think about as the First Nations. And when we go out into the streets and we set up the mics on the streets, it's predominantly First Nations that come to us. Oh, they're so bound. There's such a bondage of drugs and despair that's taking over. And you know the devil is so mad because he wants to bring a holy revival to your people. And as I saw that man looking like that, I felt like he was some type of witch doctor or something. Like he was, like there was a force trying to work and actually people that were trying to work. And the only reason I'm bringing this out because I don't give any glory to the devil because I know how much greater Jesus' power is. But I just began to plead the blood of Jesus against that thing. And I started pleading the blood of Jesus. And I just put, put myself at the foot of the cross. And I said, Jesus, I receive your blood. I receive that sprinkling of your blood. I receive that mighty outpouring of your blood. And I stand only in your blood and through the power of your blood. And with that power, I take authority over you, Satan. I want no part of you. And in Jesus' name, that thing left. But Brother Sam, when you were up here speaking, I, that's, that's what I saw. I know that's what I saw. So I believe God. You know, it's kind of like a voodoo witchcraft thing. And a lot of it comes from People going back to that spiritualism that's not of God. We have, you know, there's only two spirits in the world, and that's the spirit of God and the spirit of the devil. That's one of the first things the Lord showed me when he first saved me, when he came on me with the angel of his presence. I know it was the angel of his presence. I didn't even know what had happened to me. I was back in New York. And I went in, a, a Jewish girl, at first I was raised Catholic, and I was nothing but a little heathen, where I was brought up only 10 blocks outside of New York City. There was Catholics, there was Catholic, uh, big Catholic churches, and Jewish synagogues. There was a Jewish synagogue right behind my house. 
and there was a Catholic church was on the corner. Nobody ever told me I had to be saved. I never held a Bible in my hand. I never knew that Jesus was going to come back in the clouds of glory. We weren't allowed in the 70s, to, when I was first saved, to say the name of Jesus in the Catholic church. If we did slip and say the name of Jesus, then I had to bow my head. Well, you know, I wandered into that Bible study with some of the same questions that the modern church girl world is asking today. That what the modern church world is saying, well, if Jesus drank wine, I can smoke pot. That was what my question was. That's what I went there for. And you know, many people, they've accepted it. They've accepted it, but I'm telling you that this strong delusion has gone out onto the earth and it's lulling people to sleep with a spirit of slumber. And this smoke, it comes up from hell. It's just like they used to pass the peace pipe. And smoke has always been part of the of the uh, Native American and the, and the First Nations. It's always been a part. But Jesus wants to bring you deliverance. It's just like alcohol. The Bible said not to be drunken with wine wherein there is excess, but to be filled with the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. And Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I walked in there to that Bible study and I asked my question about if Jesus drank wine, then I could smoke pot. You know, they didn't argue with me. They picked up the guitar and they started singing Amazing Grace. Amen. That was the first time I'd ever heard Amazing Grace in my life. And I'm telling you, the presence of the Lord came down on me. All the pain and everything I've been through in my life as I watched my little brother die of leukemia when he was three and a half years old. I watched my sister have a nervous breakdown. They took her off and did shock treatments on her. Then my mother had a massive heart attack. I was all alone in the house. My dad was a merchant marine. He was gone for a month at a time. My house was full of witchcraft. My grandmother had seances up in the attic. She went to a fortune teller. I was so bound by fear and terror. But even though I was so terrified, the spirits were so strong in my house that the Holy Ghost, I know it was Jesus that got me out of there, but it drove me out into the streets. I went out into the streets. I walked everywhere. I had gangs chase me. I know what it's like to have adrenaline release and your feet pick up and you feel like you're flying. I know what it's like to run for my life, brother and sister. Praise God. But Jesus' hand was always with me. Yeah. I would hitchhike down to the ocean. And I could feel a force pulling me. I could feel something pulling me. Hallelujah. Well, one day when I wandered into that Bible study, Jesus Christ of Nazareth in the form of the angel of his presence, that same angel that went before the children of Israel, that same angel of his presence is the ghost of Jesus Christ. When he ascended unto the Father, he sent back his spirit. And it's that same spirit that as that spirit comes upon us and comes inside of us, oh, praise God, we enter in to that spirit. And when I felt the Holy Ghost get down, come down upon me, I was like a spectrum. I was a science major. It was like a spectrum. Blacks at one end and a spectrum. Whites at the other end. They're both common in that they're colors. Well, this, what I felt was something like I experienced through my LSD trips and my mescaline and, and lots of pot and lots of marijuana and lots of, lots of alcohol. And you know what? But it was totally, totally totally different but this spiritual realm that you enter in with these things they'll take you down a road 
that you don't want to go down. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord wants us to go on this highway of holiness, to believe that God is good. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Hallelujah to Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He is able to help us. We just have to take one step in front of the other. This is not something that's forced upon us. Even though I had that experience with the Lord, I didn't understand what happened. Everybody shook my hand, congratulated me. I had no idea what had happened to me. I had absolutely no idea. I just said, well, forget that. I had no idea what happened. But the Lord kept on working on me. He worked on me for months. And, and he was always there to the point I could hardly walk outside. And, but I knew I needed deliverance. And I didn't, I, why would I even know that? I just knew something in me, knew I needed deliverance. And I was actually uh, karate. I got in karate because that was the closest thing. I was a college girl. And, and I got in karate, started studying in college, and, and I started going to the dojo. And I was, and, and this uh, teacher, let's call him, that I had was the, he understood a little bit because he was bound. He had the Buddhas all over this thing. He went out only at night too. You know, he was bound by the devil. And so he understood what I was talking about. So there was like a connection there. But when I was leaving that dojo one night, a force took my steering wheel of my car and, and, and you know, when the Lord starts dealing with you, time it changes. And the Lord just started dealing with me. And he said, you know, that, that Jesus had wanted to use me. And that if I didn't surrender and give my heart to the Lord, that the devil was going to kill me and take my soul to hell. And I knew right then, I said, Jesus, Jesus, I'll serve you. And right then, before I hit the telephone pole, I got it back. And I just sat there on the side of the road and gave my heart to Jesus. And I found that Jewish girl that first witnessed to me. And I told her, I said, I said, there's something in me that makes me do the things that I do. I said, I need help. I need deliverance. I mean, I don't know how I even knew these things. But, but she said, well, I know some people that pray. I said, well, let's go to them. And I went to these people and I told them. And they were scared to death of me. They didn't know what to think of this woman. And so I, I, I said, if you will just agree with me, I know that God will deliver me. Yes. If you will. You know, it just takes a little bit of faith. Yes. That's all it takes. Yes. That's all it takes is that connection, yes. touching the hem of Jesus' garment. And obedience is better than sacrifice. That was Jesus that had put that on my mind. So I, they were scared to death. But they just said a little simple prayer. But I believed God that I was delivered. And I was. I was delivered. And then God began to lead me and guide me. But I... That spiritual realm, I'm saying these, the spiritualism, it's good to look back at history. It's a good thing, but not to serve, that the Bible says. Have no other gods before you. Right. Yeah. Serve only the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. He that created the heaven and the earth. Yes. Oh, with just his voice, with just the finger of God, the word of God, Jesus Christ. The heaven and the earth was spoken into existence. Hallelujah. This is the God that we serve. We don't serve the creation. We serve the creator. He is our king, our lord, and our master. And he is a jealous God. Yeah. So let us realize that God is good. And enter into his spirit. And eat of his flesh and drink of his blood and be fulfilled 
in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. And the Lord will fulfill us in every part of his life. See, I left that old karate instructor behind. Never knew that the Lord would, would give me a black belt, an ex-black belt. Brother, come on. So God, God bless you.